Mm, I would like to welcome you to the first video lecture in Lua Analysis, that is the introduction to Lua Analysis. So today this is our first video. And, uh, we are just trying to continue from where we end it. So from class, I think those who have had an opportunity, we were looking at uh, the Liu sequences. We introduced the definition of a Liu sequence and then we are able to discuss the range of a Liu sequence. And then we talked about the boundness, boundedness of the sequence. And we looked at some important theorems where we discussed that every converged sequence is bounded. And the, the other theorem that we looked at is the, the sequence the cannot converge to more than one point. We discussed this one and we proved that. And then we also went on further to discuss the, the limit points of a sequence. We define the limit point of a point, say, L, to be, or if we, or in this case, we are saying if we take a real number L to be a limit point of a sequence, then that point is a limit point. If every neighborhood of that point L contains an infinite number of members of that particular sequence, and we discuss that one in detail. And then we went on further to discuss the existence of a limit point. And in this case, we proved this using the Bolzano-Westside theorem, that is the theorem of Bolzano under sequences, where we were saying every bounded sequence has a limit point. And we said this is true if we look at two possibilities, where we were saying if a sequence is bounded, so should its range. So we looked at the, the length which is finite and the length which is infinite and we brought this theorem. And then today we continue, we are going to look at the first theorem. So this is theorem 4, okay? Very important theorem. Unfortunately we are not going to prove it, we will just give the statement. So this theorem said that uh, the set of uh, limit points, the set of limit points of a bounded sequence as the greatest and the list member so in short what we are saying is if we have a set consisting of limit points and we are saying that set is bounded then it should have the greatest and the least member meaning that it should have the biggest value and the smallest value Okay, I think that is an important theorem which should be understood in terms of limit points. So if a limit point is bounded, then we should expect to find the greatest and the least member of that set of limit points. And then we'll look at another feature, which is basically the result from just the same theorem that we have stated here. Now this result is basically in an interesting, we are saying the greatest Okay, the greatest and the smallest the greatest and the smallest limit points the greatest and the smallest limit points of a of, of course I would say bounded sequence can be bounded or it can just be a sequence I would say respectively are 
code the upper and the lower limit. So in short we are saying from the theorem where we stated that the, the set of limit points of a bounded sequence has the greatest and the least member. So now from this result, what we are saying is the greatest is called the, the upper limit point and the smallest is called the lower limit point. Now this is the condition. It can come from a bounded sequence or it can be coming from any sequence. So some sequences which are bounded have the upper limit point and the lower limit point. Okay, I hope that is very clear. Now, this has to be illustrated. So I will look at some of the possible examples. So what are some of the examples that will help understand this? Now, imagine if we are given a sequence that is SN. And this sequence we are saying our SN is equal to base 30 negative 1 to the power n. Where we are saying n is a, a member of natural numbers. Now if you look at this sequence, we need to understand that this sequence is bounded. Now how do we confirm that this sequence is bounded? So we may say if you have S1, that is if the power n is equal to 1, then we are going to have negative 1. If we have S2, then we are going to have 1. We are going to have S3, which is going to be negative 1. So in short, this sequence, if we check it, is going to have this negative 1, which is less than Sn, which is less than or equal to 1. So in short, what are we saying? This sequence is bounded. Okay? That is for all values of n, this one. So if you take all the values of n in natural numbers, we are going to have the bounds negative 1 and then 1. Now, the question is, of these values, we need to understand that one of them will be referred to as the upper limit. So now, the upper limit is the greatest of all the limit points in the bounded sequence. So this one is bounded, and the greatest of all the limit points, but starting from negative 1 up to 1, it's basically easy to see it's one so we're going to have one so the upper limit point is one and then here we have the lower the lower limit so our lower limit is gonna be equal to negative one so in short using the results from whatever we have just been looking at we are able to tell both the up lower limit and the upper limit from the given sequence now, we have so many examples that we would like to look at. Now, I want us to look at a special example again. Now, this example is given by a sequence. So, we are given a sequence, say Sn. And then we are saying our Sn in this case is equal to 1 plus negative 1 to the power n. And then we are saying n is basically a natural number. So now we need to find out if this sequence is bounded. And if it's bounded, then we need to find the lower limits and the upper limit. So if I take my Sn to be equal to, say, an even number. In short, we are saying, I say even number in this case will say those like coming as 2n. So those numbers... If we put an even number here, I think the usual result will be the same. So if I put 2 here, this will become 1. Put 4 here, it will become 1. So for even numbers, the result is going to be equal to 2. This is for even numbers. Now what about a odd numbers? So if we put an odd number, say 1. Okay, I will say 3, 1 will give me 0, 
3, this is going to be negative 1. If I add to 1 to give me 0, so it means for odd numbers, we are going to get 0. That is for all n in this, that is when the result is just basically coming from the odd numbers. So take note, that is for all n. The results are coming from even numbers. I hope everyone is able to understand that. So now from here, what are the limit points? So we are going to say that 0 and 2 are the limit points. Okay. Now the question is, what do we say about these two? So I will begin with the upper limit. So our upper limit is going to be equal to 2. And then the limit which is going to be considered as our lower limit is going to be equal to 0. So I'm sure at this point everything is making sense. And I'm sure everyone is able to fall. Okay. I move on. Now let's try to look at some other examples so that we make this point very clear. So I'll look at four of them. So those, each one of them is going to be different from the other. So now look at uh, this one. If I look at uh, this sequence, I'm saying my SN. If my SN is given by negative 1 to the power n minus 1 then this is the over n factorial and then our n is from the set of natural numbers so what are some of the possible results if i was to list down the set consisting these sequences then i'm gonna have if my n is equal to 1 then i'm gonna have 1 1 factorial is 1 1, one minus 1 then a number to the power 0 is going to be 1. So 1 divided by 1 is just 1. If I take my n to be equal to 2, so it's 2 minus 1, then that's 1. So it's going to have negative 1 over 2 factorial. Then the other one, if I put my n to be equal to 3, that is 3 minus 1. So that is going to give me 2. I divide 1 to the power 2, so it's going to be positive over 3 factorial. And then the next one will be negative 1 over 4 factorial. And the list goes on. So this is basically what I'm going to have. Mind you, this one, how, what is about this sequence? Can we confirm that this one is bounded? Of course, if you look at these values, they are we are moving in a certain direction, alternating between two values. And those two values are what you consider to be the bounds. So if we check the values, I think the smallest, the biggest among the smallest is going to be negative 1 over 2. So this is the, and then if you compare the negatives, this one should be bigger than that, which means they will keep on reducing my heart. So I'm going to have negative 1 over 2. And then, of course, my sequence C, S and 4 in between. Then, if you look at the positive values, 1, 1 over 3, so 1 will be the 1 in this case. So with this pattern, then we are saying this is bounded. So from that context, we are saying this sequence is bounded with the lowest and the highest, like that, and everything in between. So with this understanding, so the question is, how many limit points we have here? Okay, so the limit point that we have, there is only one limit point. So according to the definition of limit points, the only possible limit point that we can have between negative 1 over 2 and 1 is basically 0. So we are saying 0 being the only, the only limit point. 
so in short the lower limit is going to be equal to zero and then we are going to state again that the upper limit is also going to be equal to zero so from here what are we saying the limit of the sequence sn as my n approaches infinity is going to be equal to zero so we don't have two different limit points for this one and then we'll look at the last one the last sequence and then check if we have the upper limit and the lower limit so we will check different limit points and then we have a unique limit point in this case for this example now let's look at the the fourth example in this fourth example we are given a sequence sn now if you look at the sequence sn we are assuming that our sn is equal to n squared and we are saying n is basically a natural number So now, if you were to look at this, what do we get? So let's, for better understanding, we'll try to make a set. So if n is equal to 1, then it's going to be 1. If n is equal to, I'm going to have 4. If n is equal to 3, then I'm going to have 9. 4, 16, 5, I'm going to have 25. And then the list goes on and on and on. Until we reach somewhere there. Now, the question is, is this a sequence bounded? The answer is yes, it is bounded below but not above. So the sequence SN is bounded below but not above. So what does this mean? This means that it has got this value as the lowest value here but if you go this side there is no value that you can specifically say that that's the highest value so in short this sequence has the lower bound but doesn't have the upper bound so now from here it is clear that none of these points appear to be the limit point so what is our conclusion from this there is no sorry there is no limit point in there there is no limit point in the sequence so from the this sequence of real numbers we don't have a limit point so that is our conclusion and this marks the end of this part where we are talking about bounded sequence having the upper limit and lower limit and then having the greatest and the, the least limit point so this is the end thank you